Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show how I made this Orc book as well as the Orc diorama that's inside the book. So before I show you the diorama, you first need to see why I've built one inside a book. Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and today I am issuing a challenge to the miniature hobbyist to create a diorama. Now both the miniature hobbyist and myself have created dioramas before. Here's my stalker diorama and the miniature hobbyist has done some cool orc layers in the past both of these and several others that we've both made are viewed from the front how about if you had an enclosed diorama that was viewed from the top this shift in perspectives gives uh, some options and some limitations and i think it can make for something a little more interesting so, the challenge, if you choose to accept it, is make a diorama that is enclosed, viewable only from the top, and just to keep things on a smaller scale, a maximum of one miniature, whether it's a 40k model, some other humanoid-ish model, an alien, or an animal, but only one of them. So obviously I accepted the challenge, as I love to make things. And the first thing I do when thinking about a diorama is what kind of base I'm going to use to build it upon. I also think of ways that I can store the diorama once it is made. Obviously in this case, as I'm going to view the diorama from above, and I thought the best solution for this was to build it in a book. On one of my previous build videos, someone had mentioned that I should make a mine shaft. So that gave me the perfect idea for this diorama. Viewing from above, I could make it into a gold mine. But then I thought, ah, I want to use orcs, because obviously as you all know, I love orcs. So rather than it being gold, it's going to be teeth. So I started by using this piece of train track that's actually been in the box that was in my loft for, well, I don't know how many years. I think the set this came from is probably about 40 years old now, maybe even a lot older. As it's just been sat gathering dust, I thought I'd finally put it to good use. And I've also got this open carriage that I'm sure I can cut down and convert into what I need. So I haven't got any gold, but I have got these coloured jewels, which I think would work really well. And then I had another cunning idea that maybe I could put some lights behind these just so I can light them up. So I've got a rough idea on how I want this to look, but as the main centrepiece is the railway track, I'm going to get that in first and get that in the centre, and then I can just build around it. So as I want to have the jewels lit up, I need to get the lights in for that first, and then I can start building things on top of the lights. So I think this box is made from balsa wood, which is pretty good because it's nice and soft and easy to drill and then I can just pass the lights through. So I've got the lights roughly in the position I want them and I've glued them down and obviously it's worth testing every now and then just to make sure they still work. And then it's just a case of gluing the gems on top of where the lights are. As I want to keep the box fairly light, I'm going to pack out areas with these polystyrene balls. So I've got them in a variety of sizes, plus they are easy to cut, and then I can just position them around the track, going up into all the corners. So one of my favourite materials to use when I'm making these kind of dioramas is good old grout, as this is nice and cheap, easy to use, and after about 24 hours goes rock hard. So I'm using this expensive tool to plaster it on. Obviously it's just a lolly stick, but it does the trick really well. I could use my fingers to do this, but I don't really want to get too messy. So now it's all covered, I can just let that dry, and while it's doing that, I can work on the outside of the book. So to keep it in the orc theme, I'm going to make the front 
look like it's made up of loads of panels that have been riveted together. So as well as using the cardboard, I'm also going to use this thin foam that I'm probably going to be using in all my dioramas just because it's so easy to use, cuts well and it comes in a variety of thicknesses. So that helps give it the look of an old book. And now back onto the front. So I've cut out an orc face using the thicker foam. And now I'm just going to stick on these little jewels that look like kind of rivets. So this process takes a while but the end result looks pretty good. So back to the inside, as I don't want the floor to be nice and smooth, I'm just going to use these little stones or bits of gravel and I'm just going to glue them in place. So now onto the carriage that's going to be holding all those teeth that the orc's been mining. As this carriage is a bit too big, I'm just going to take the top off, use the bottom half, but even that's a bit too big. So I'm going to cut that down to size as well. So I had to get the use of sprues in somewhere, so I'm going to use these just to make some supports. Plus I also wanted to say about the fact of cutting nibbly knobbly bits off. I think one day I might have to get some t-shirts made with the words nibbly knobbly bits written all over them. Maybe that should be my catchphrase on my channel. So I'm keeping these supports nice and simple and then just gluing them in place. And there we go, I think that looks pretty good inside and out. Well there is one last thing I forgot to put in, and that's some skulls for the, uh, for the little orc chap to be mining. So now on to the orc that I'm going to be using. I'm starting to get a bigger collection now of orc parts. So it's just a case of going through, picking out body parts, the head, the torso, the arms, of what I think the orc miner might look like. So I've glued the orc parts together, and I've made him a kind of a pickaxe, but to get his arms in the position I needed, I had to do a bit of cutting up. So it's left a few gaps which I'm going to fill using this milliput. So to make the painting a little bit easier for myself, I've started buying some of these contrast paints. So these basically kind of have a wash inside them that leave darker areas in crevices, which is pretty cool. So this definitely makes it easier Straight away there's a bit of contrast and different difference in the colours, so this may be the way to go for me. So 
So I've given the diorama a coat of grey primer and now I just need to scrape it off of where all the jewels are. As the mine shaft is going to be kind of grey inside, all I need to do is just go over the whole thing with a black wash and then do some light dry brushing with some white paint. And for the front of the book, I'm just going to do some dry brushing with some silver paint. Now that's all done, all that's left is to glue in the carriage. And to glue in my little fella. Oh, there is one more thing I need to do. And that's just to paint the outside in some white. To make it look like it's the pages of the book. And there we go, once that's all done, this is how it looks. And to make it look even better, we can turn the lights on for the jewels. So I hope you like this build guys. It's certainly been one of my funnest ones to make so far. It's always nice to do different things. And it was great to get the challenge from Ed about doing a diorama that's viewed from the top. So to help me out guys, it'd be great if you can like the video, leave some comments, and if possible, if you can share this on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, or basically anywhere you know you can share it, that'd be awesome. And thanks again to all my patrons, I seem to be getting more and more each week, which is awesome, because every little bit helps guys. And basically any money this channel makes just goes back into me buying more stuff to make more videos. So there are some affiliate links down in the description guys. And these are for Amazon, which is where I basically I buy all my stuff from. As well as Wayland Games, which is somewhere now where I buy all my figures from. If you are new here guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And turn on the notification bell to be informed of all the videos that I, I make. Don't forget to head over to Ed's channel. There are links in the description, as that's where I'll be going now to see what he's built. Okay guys, that's it. Bye for now.